Hey, Retcon Raider here, and welcome to Corruption 2029. You guys know the drill. I had a bunch of footage left over from my overview, and it seemed a shame to let it go to waste. Fair warning, this is the press release, so it's a little rough around the edges, and I've only played the game for a couple of hours, so things might get a little bumpy. That said, let's get started. In the near future, a second American Civil War breaks out between two factions, the NAC and the UPA. Misinformation and propaganda blur the truth and feeds the hate between the two factions. Technology has turned soldiers into living machines, commanded remotely from outside the battlefield. These units have little left of their humanity. Commander, this is Mission Navigator EOS. I need you to close all other comms and remain on this channel. Your priority should be to locate any surviving crew members and link them to the squad. Sending some rough coordinates to get you started. And here we go. I'll try to keep things moving along pretty briskly. I'm very sorry, Commander. This unit is too badly injured. They won't make it. Medevac is coming. Um, hey there. Great. That's one unit linked to the squad. Heads up, Commander. I'm detecting a small number of NAC troops. They seem to be grouped around one of our units. Proceed with caution. Hidden. To help plan the perfect ambush, you can split up and hide your units. Hidden units cannot be seen by enemy units and will remain hidden until activated. You're some sort of hero, mindlessly following orders that have been pumped into your head? Damn terrorist! Tactical combat. Combat is turn-based. Each unit in your squad gets two action points per turn. Some actions will end your turn once used. This is shown on the action bar when the action is selected. Honestly, if you've played Mutant Year Zero, then most of this will probably look pretty familiar.
red covers. Using cover during combat is essential. Low cover grants a 25% defense bonus, while full cover grants a 75% defense bonus. Flanking a cover position will cancel its defensive bonus. Before you move, check your covers. A red cover indicates an enemy is currently able to flank this position. Hmm. I'd have to double check, but I don't think they actually had those flanking indicators in Mutant Year Zero. surviving unit, checking the status of our VTOL. The dropship was destroyed upon impact. All ordnance carried on board has also been lost. Scanning the area for alternative transport. Be careful. The rescued unit has a silent weapon. Silent weapons can be used while sneaking to kill isolated enemies without being heard. Make sure your silent weapon can deal enough damage to kill the enemy. If the enemy survives your attack, they will alert others. All right, I found an NAC harpy in close vicinity, unarmed but heavily armored. So you should be able to bully through any flak. Sending coordinates. Sounds like fun. Let's get to it. Fortunately for us, the Harpy appears to be loosely guarded. Most likely the remainder of the response team. Healing. Medkits are found in the combat zone and can be used during combat to heal damage. You can also use medkits outside of combat in the loadout screen. Commander, you are free to approach your objective however you like. Use sneak to scope out objectives and look for weak points. Or use brute force to attempt to overpower the enemy. Moving to the city. I never thought I'd be saying this, but President Ford is right. The UPA are monsters, and they're coming to take it all from us hard-working Americans. I've been living here my whole life didn't want to move to the big city. But now, those terrorist assholes are driving us further and further towards the capital. I hope the house is still there when we return. You shouldn't smoke. It gets you killed. Sometimes by invisible assassins. Let's walk the perimeter before we do anything rash. Aha!
Upgrades Config grenades are found in the combat zone and can be thrown during combat. Config grenades can be configured to perform different effects before they are thrown by pressing X. The effects available depend on the squad upgrades you have unlocked by completing missions. They obviously want us to use that grenade for the tutorial, but we'll just hold on to it for later. There's our first liquidator. That guy's tough enough that he'll require a full round of concentrated fire to drop. Or we could use our grenade. But like I said, I'd really rather hold on to that for now. Language. Ow. Roger. Nicely done, Commander. That's our ride secured. I will update Good you come. from inside the Harpy. And tutorial's done. Moving on. Augmented Leap Whilst having an almost unlimited battery life, the maximum strength of augmented limbs is purposefully limited to prevent injury to the unit and to avoid unnecessary wear on the equipment. This module briefly overrides the leg limiters, which allows for a single superhuman leap. Not gonna lie, that is hands down my favorite implant. API G75 Incendiary Upgrade grants the ability for the squad to convert regular explosive grenades into anti-personnel incendiaries. When thrown against a hard surface, a localized spread of napalm is produced, which sticks to all surfaces it comes into contact with. Hmm. I prefer explosives, but that could be useful too. Commander, I am patching directly into the Harpy's onboard computer. Operation data incoming. Five hours ago, an NAC communicate was intercepted which highlighted the activation of a weapon of mass destruction. Code name, Savior. The exact location of this site is unknown. We believe that this weapon is to be used in a retaliatory strike against the UPA. Your mission is to locate and secure Savior at any cost. Okay, so three files, seven scenarios per file. Seems to imply there's 21 scenarios in the full campaign. There's definitely room for expansion, though, so I don't know. These are your current available missions. The UPA will authorize implant usage depending on mission performance. 
If you are feeling like you really want to stick it to the NAC, you can try to earn some medals. Yeah, medals are mostly just arbitrary challenges, so we'll probably end up ignoring them. We'll mainly focus on things that actually give us new toys to play with, like the main and bonus objectives. Yeah, none of these are reasonable with our current loadout. Anyway, let's have a look at our options here. Ooh. You know what? I think we'll prioritize getting our hands on that shotgun. Bottleneck. The Stafford Lane Toll Station once monitored the highway between Chase County and Broken Wheel. Due to the increase of UPA activity in the region, civilians were forcibly evacuated. Once the area was cleared, the toll station was repurposed as a militarized entry point into new American territory. We must open the gates for our own troops, eliminate all resistance. Sounds simple enough. Let's get to it. This is where you can assign weapons and implants. Each unit can carry up to two weapons into the field. They can be given up to three active implants in any combination you like. Squad stats and passive implant data is also displayed here. Alright, well, we don't really have a lot of toys to play with right now, but... I think what we're going to go for is a pretty basic setup with Briggs on support, Wolf on assault, and Tranter as the squad sniper. Yeah, let's just swap our gear around a bit here, get our guys uh, slightly better kitted for their roles. Okay, that looks good. This screen shows our current knowledge of NAC territory. You can choose your landing site and view NAC intel. Be advised, you cannot change the squad's loadout during an active mission. checkpoint is preventing our ground units from reaching the other side of the river. Have your units eliminate all resistance in the area. We need the gates swung wide open so we can all get over. We'll see what we can do. Which, considering that we are some sort of murderous meat puppets, is uh, probably going to involve murder. I can still smell them. Burning. Why didn't they stop the car? Desperate times make people do desperate things. And nothing left to lose, I suppose. Pig sick of this shit. We used to protect the people. Now we're ordered to mow them down simply for being afraid? For wanting protection from the Yupa? Don't have a choice, unless you want to be re-educated. For a fact that I don't. <laughs> Yupa. The technical sergeant is transmitting some erroneous data back to his unit. Kill him last! Will do, mystery voice. Will do. I could hear the guns last night. The Yupa's expeditionary force. Sounded like they're on top of us already. A month ago, Yellow would have been deep in the belly of Nack territory. The front is rolling back on a daily basis. We are losing good soldiers defending this shit. Command ain't got our back, that's for sure. Yet they will still find time to punish us for talk like that. Let's just keep our heads down and pray Command sends help. Yeah. When you need to constantly remind people you are in control, you aren't. Hmm. Huh. Interesting to see that the NAC fields more conventional soldiers. 
though obviously that comes with its own drawbacks. Sniper up top. Let's take that guy out. Got it. You know, just one of those feral TVs out in the wild. get the guys up front. Okay, so we only have one silenced gun, which means we will have to go loud for this. But we should be far enough away that the other guys won't overhear it. Okay, you Fingers crossed. Very nice. All right, I think that just leaves four guys left, counting our uh, primary target. Oof, pretty tightly clustered. That means we will have an actual gunfight here. Red Memorandum. Severity Red. Effective from 2200 hours, 16th January. Frontline has rolled back to location Theta. Any civilians attempting to enter NAC territory via Checkpoint Yellow after the rollback time shown above are to be executed. No exceptions. Well, that's, uh, lovely. Okay, I think the tower here makes an ideal perch, but first, we've got to get rid of this guy. You know what? Let's have a little fun here. Cooldown unlock. Some weapons and implants will enter cooldown once used. Cooldowns are not time-based, but require the indicated number of enemy kills to unlock again. I'm hit. <laughs> I love that mod.
Roger. God damn it. Shoot. I was really hoping for a crit there. Alright, let's get Wolf undercover. Notice the Overwatch symbol. Gotta keep an eye on that. Got an advantage on them up here, so there we go. I'm out. Reloading. On it. Oof. <laughs> That's fine. We do heal between missions. Cooldowns reset between missions too, so. Oh boy, <laughs> never gonna get tired of that. Regroup on the tower. See if we can draw her back this way. Guarding. Confirm. Covering. Reload. Guarding. That'll do it. for this. Why, thank you. Zebra SG-33. Known as the Z within the core, this chunky shotgun is capable of dealing maximum damage up close. The weapon is also able to hit multiple targets with its wide firing arc. Movement Booster. A raised endurance and stamina threshold is enabled within the unit's brain, which allows them to move further during tactical combat. Very nice.
Okay, that unlocks the next mission in line. Oh. Loadout. Double objective missions require you to complete both main objectives in one drop. You will not be able to change your squad's loadout while in mission, so plan carefully. Well, since that's obviously a longer, more complex mission, we'll just stick with this one instead. Scramble. Satellite images show that a large-scale communication jamming array has been built at the Shady Oaks Motel. In theory, the array can be used by the enemy to scramble our messages. Needless to say, this could affect our advance upon Savior. To disable the jammers, our squad will need to find and hack the system's master terminal, which will be located inside one of the buildings. Main Objectives Locate and disable the master unit. Bonus Objective Locate and kill Liquidator Scarin. Yeah, I think we can handle that. <laughs> Not going to bother with any of these challenges, though. Got a few new toys to play with, so let's convert Wolf into our shotgunner. And we'll toss the Leap Mod over to Tranter, as our sniper will want him up in elevated positions. Alright, let's get in there. Picking up high levels of signal decay in the area. The jammers must be close. Keep an eye out for the master terminal. If your units can access this, it will deactivate all the jamming towers connected to it. Commander, have your units locate and disable the master terminal. On it. about that. Actually, it looks like they're not moving, so we'll need to focus on the stragglers first. Evacuation notice. To all residents of the Broken Wheel Bridge area, due to enemy incursion, you are required to evacuate the area via the Northern Checkpoint. The checkpoint will close and therefore be enforced at 2200 on January 16th. Many persons caught within the Broken Wheel Bridge area after this time incur the risk of being treated as hostiles by our forces. Oh, <laughs> I want those explosives, but we'll have to come back for them once we've dealt with that guy. It could be argued that the NAC are frugal to an excess. Why dig when there's already a suitable tomb to fill? Hey, there's our secondary target. Hmm. Okay. Distraction point. 
and two NAC protectors. One of them's roaming, so I think it's pretty obvious what we have to do there. Red Memorandum. Severity Red. Due to recent events concerning Agent, all ground units must observe these protocols with immediate effect. Retinal scan every four hours. Peer check, general health and morale. All transferees, minimum five hours cold room seclusion on arrival. Yeah, they're not paranoid or anything. Then again, I guess they do have a bunch of invisible assassins stalking them, so it might be justified. Now, the trick is going to be taking this guy down, without Liquidator Scarin hearing us. I'm still unclear on exactly how far away they can hear unsilenced gunshots. Boom. Remote explosives are found in the combat zone and can be placed anywhere outside of combat. You can detonate them at any time, but bear in mind that this will trigger combat. We'll put these to good use. Okay, these guys next. Let's try out that shotgun. Nice. Looks like Scalen, uh, Scarin is none the wiser. Let's go take him out.
Lovely. That knocks out our bonus objective. And I think it clears the pool area. Let's have a look at the uh, main building. murder this guy. EDI Index HU726 Despite the best efforts of our coaches, the following citizens could not be edified. Dr. Sander Levine, Nonconformity Mr. Ricky Plant, Deviancy Miss Tara Brown, Defacement of NAC Property Miss Sonia Hoffman, Nonconformity Mr. Cecil Wanamaker, Insubordination Mr. Richard May, insubordination. Professor Krista Aroka, deviancy. May God have mercy on them all. Well, that is just delightful. Just following orders, I'm sure. Close to the jammer's control terminal. My readings just spiked suddenly. Noted. Just making sure we're not missing anything here. Okay, let's wrap this up. Hostile taken. Okay, I think I see what we can do here. Good kill. Actually, let's check out the uh, upper floor first. I know we saw a ladder here somewhere. Nice. <laughs> More corpses.
All right. Now, I think we can wrap this up. It's fine. That guy got executed afterwards for his failure. Better myself. Great work. Okay, let's see what we got here. Kinetic Barrier. A throwable hard light projection unit which casts a protective dome over a specified area. The dome allows slow moving objects, such as the units themselves, to move through but will filter out any high-velocity objects, such as bullets and shrapnel. Only lasts for one turn, but that could definitely come in handy. Weapon Range Boost 1. First-generation optical implant which improves the range of weapons held by the unit. Increases weapon range by 25%. Simple, but very nice. All right, folks, we're past the 40-minute mark, and my throat is starting to get a bit dry. I think this is enough to at least give you a basic idea of how the game works, but I would like to push on for at least one more video, just to show you some of the fancier toys. We'll pick up here next time. See you then. Oh, and remember, although I do love playing Corruption 2029, you can find out more about the game by visiting the official Facebook page, the official Twitter feed, or the official store page over on Epic Games. Links are in the description. <laughs>